Item number SCP-1088 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures Containment of SCP-1088 primarily consists of preventing unauthorized access. To this end, all doors and ground floor windows are to be locked, and a fence erected around the building. Two security guards are to be stationed at the entrance to this enclosure to turn away any civilians who would attempt to enter. An additional three guards are to patrol the maternity ward as a second line of defense. Only male security staff are to be assigned to SCP-1088, and no female personnel are to be allowed inside, except for testing purposes. In the event of accidental exposure of Foundation personnel to the effects of SCP-1088, all resulting pregnancies are to be terminated, and the victim issued Class A amnestics to prevent any psychological damage. The same procedure is to be followed in all cases of civilian exposure. SCP-1088 is the designation given to Hospital, a hospital located in the city of in the It closed in after going bankrupt, and there is no record of it displaying any acknowledged properties before then. The building remained abandoned, and came into Foundation containment about three years after its closure, on reports of the building being quote-unquote haunted. The building is currently kept in a state of good repair. SCP-1088 exhibits no knowledge properties unless entered by a fertile female. All such individuals report hearing a distant wailing, crying, or gurgling noise, similar to that made by infants. Accompanying males do not report hearing such a noise, and even clinically deaf females claim to hear it, strongly suggesting a psychic cause to the effect. Affected individuals are drawn to follow the noise to its source, eventually leading them to the maternity ward of the hospital. Once there, subjects will attempt to find an isolated location, whereupon this typically results in between two and five fertilized embryos implanting in the endometrial lining of the woman's uterus. Victims are dazed, and typically wander out of the hospital within a few minutes. Most seem to experience some degree of amnesia as to what happened to them inside. Genetic analysis of the developing embryos reveals them to be unrelated to the host, which may, in certain cases, lead to incompatibilities that result in a miscarriage. Cross-checking with the recovered records of Hospital reveals that the embryos created by SCP-1088's effects genetically match either stillborn fetuses or babies that died soon after birth. Born at Hospital See Addendum 1088-8 Though the records are not complete enough to allow confirmation, it seems highly probable that each embryo is in effect a clone of some child that died shortly before or after being delivered in the maternity ward of SCP-1088. The mechanism for this is unknown. Case 1 Approximately 43% The pregnancy continues to develop normally for a period of time no less than 23 weeks. After this point, in many cases, development may simply stop indefinitely. The fetus remains in a constant state, and the mother never gives birth. Testing has not shown an upper limit on the time in which this state can persist. If a cesarean section is attempted, the fetus dies when removed from the uterus, no matter what life support is used. This seems to occur in cases where the fetus matches a stillbirth. Case 2 approximately 54%. The pregnancy is entirely mundane, and the baby is born as normal. However, at some point typically within three months, the child stops developing. Again, this state persists indefinitely. This seems to occur in cases where the baby matches one that died in the hospital. The time until the child stops developing seems to match exactly the point at which hospital records show the corresponding baby died. Case 3 Approximately 3% Personnel at level 3 or higher may consult Addendum 1088-8 for information. Though affected individuals often exhibit symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder, most are pleased by their pregnancy and any subsequent children. Consequently, 
despite the physiological stresses of carrying multiple fetuses for an extended period of time, few will seek to have the pregnancies terminated. Similarly, victims resist attempts to confiscate the babies born to Case II embryos for research or adoption, despite the psychological and financial stresses caused by caring for infants that never mature further. Addendum 1088-8 In Case 3, the pregnancy is again mundane, and the baby is born and develops as normal. Though no anomalies have been noted with Case 3 children, genetic testing has shown that they match children born at hospital who survived through adulthood. Interestingly, a disproportionate amount of the people with a Case 3 child associated with them have a criminal record, and of those, most show signs of antisocial personality disorder.